If you've been looking to end your procrastination, you've probably heard of a few different tools to tackle it. I found some of these tools helpful, but I was still struggling. Then I got recommended the Feeling Good Handbook by Dr. David Burns, and it has by far the most effective set of methods, and they work in synergy with the other tools. So let's quickly go over all of them. If you want to just skip to the Feeling Good Handbook, I've set chapters. Scheduling. Ali Abdal mentions it, Hamza mentions it, Jordan Peterson mentions it, as does the Feeling Good Handbook. It seems essential. If you don't schedule it, you're probably not going to do it. So I set events on my calendar to work on my next video, but I kept ignoring them when the time came, procrastinating again and again. Setting a schedule is important, but it was not enough for me. Two minute rule. Another tip I heard was the two minute rule from Atomic Habits. Instead of setting your goal to run for 30 minutes, set your goal to put on your shoes and tie your shoelaces. So focus on the initial phase of the habit alone. But most times I wasn't even willing to do the first two minutes of sitting down at my desk. So this was not very helpful on its own. Dopamine detox. Dopamine detox helps significantly just cutting oneself off from stimulation as much as possible. But even then, this did not help me 100% because I was reading books to procrastinate instead of making videos. So cutting myself off from TV and my phone still didn't get me to do what I must do. Change your state. Tony Robbins says you have to change your state. Everybody's been in a super pumped and super motivated state and that can be created. He said motion creates emotion. Moving your body changes your state. This has been a hit or miss for me. I've tried jumping on the trampoline for a minute to pump myself up, but that wasn't effective enough. Maybe motion has to be sustained for a longer period of time for it to be effective. Another day when I worked out for 8 minutes, I got pumped and started writing my script afterwards. I'm not saying you have to work out to get motivated. Maybe a 15 minute walk can do the trick. But I'm not going to work out or walk every time I feel unmotivated. I needed another strategy. Just do it. Action breeds motivation, which breeds more action. The more you do, the more you'll feel like doing. But doing comes first. You have to get started whether you feel like it or not. Just do it. But this is not the most helpful advice because the reason you don't just do it is because you don't want to. So these tips are good, but I found they're not enough on their own. Enter the feeling good handbook. This takes the most effort compared to the other methods, but I found it also the most helpful. Start with a pen and paper. Step one, cost benefit analysis. First, write the task you are procrastinating. For me, it's making videos. List the advantages and disadvantages of procrastinating. Advantages, I don't have to put in any effort or focus. I can have a good time watching YouTube or reading a book. If I put it out of my mind, I won't have to think about it until later. Disadvantages. I'll feel guilty and useless, a failure, lose respect for myself, getting further from my ideal self and goals, turning into a shameful old infant, letting my subscribers down. Now list the advantages and disadvantages of getting started today. Advantages. I'll feel better about myself if I at least get started. I'll probably feel more motivated once I start. We'll get closer to my goals and ideal self. My true fans will be happier when I post a video. Disadvantages. I have to put in effort, I don't want to. It will take a long time. I'd rather relax and watch YouTube, read a book, play Resident Evil 4 Remake. Some other advantages of starting today, you may feel greater self-esteem, other people may get off your back and respect you more, you may experience a mood lift. Other disadvantages of starting today, the task may be difficult, you may feel frustrated and nervous, you may feel obligated to do even more once you get started, you may fail. People may get ticked off at you if you don't do a good job. You won't be able to use the time to do something more enjoyable. The cost benefit analysis may indicate that even if you don't want to do it because you don't feel like it, it may still be in your best interest to get started. Now you may think, yeah, I know that already even without writing it down, but it's powerful when you're putting it down on paper instead of just having it vaguely in your head. There's something magical about writing it down. On the other hand, you may find that you never want to do the thing you've been putting off. That's your free choice and that's okay. Once you decide not to do it, you're no longer procrastinating. Step two, anticipate things that will get in the way and make a plan. It's like how horse blinders work. You remove distractions so that you only focus on the road ahead. The following tips are not from the book, but have been crucial for me in our digital age. I know my phone is very distracting, so I set it to do not disturb and I put it out of reach. 
It's over there. YouTube is a huge rabbit hole for me and sometimes I need to use it to search for something. So I got the unhook extension to remove all recommended videos from the homepage and sidebar. You can always toggle it off when you want to indulge. If you need to block more websites, you can get the leech block extension. With your phone out of the way and websites blocked, let's go to the next step. Step three, make the job easy. Adequate instead of perfect. If you're writing something and you're stuck because you want to write a good sentence, try writing an adequate sentence first to get started. You write something adequate, then do some adequate editing the next day. That's better than striving for perfection and not writing at all. Another way to make the job easy is to break it down into its smallest components and do one part at a time. For me, it would be focusing on the script first, so don't worry about shooting or video editing. A different way to make the job easy is to work in short spurts. This is akin to the two minute rule mentioned earlier. I used to tell myself I have to work between 25 minutes to four hours every day, but I still wasn't doing it. Now I lowered the bar to 10 minutes a day. Every time I sit down for 10 minutes, I always end up working longer, but it's not as hard to sit down and start when I think I just have to do 10 minutes. This also overlaps with Jordan Peterson saying, negotiate with yourself instead of treating yourself like a slave. Getting started is the hardest part. Once you start, it's usually much easier. So it's important to build the habit of getting started. But you might think, I don't even want to sit down for 10 minutes, let alone two minutes. Me too. That's where the next step changed everything for me. So here's the final step to building the habit of getting started. Step four, change the negative thoughts that prevent you from starting. When you procrastinate, what negative thoughts are popping up? Dr. Burns says to write these thoughts down, that it's crucial that you cannot change the way you think and feel if you refuse to write your thoughts down. He calls it the TikTok technique. Tick is task interfering cognitions, thoughts that prevent you from doing tasks. Talk is task oriented cognitions, thoughts that get you to do tasks. Here's what mine looks like. Tick, it's a lot of work and effort. Talk, you can work on it a bit at a time. You'll probably feel a whole lot better if you at least get started. Tick, I don't feel like it. I don't want to. Talk, you don't have to want to get started. Starting will make you feel more like doing it. You'll feel worse if you don't. Tick, it'll be a drag. Talk, how do you know it'll be a drag? Maybe it won't be as bad as you think. Do 10 minutes and find out. Writing this down has really made a difference for me. When I was reading the example TikTok, I thought, yeah, that makes sense. That's similar to my own thoughts. But when I wrote it down myself, it really started to change my thinking. I'm not saying this method is perfect. I still slip and procrastinate, but it takes way less time to get back on track. It's like I literally got a boost in motivation. It's way more motivating than even reading my goals multiple times a day, which wasn't helping. The funny thing is, it's not like I read my tech talk table on a daily basis. I wrote it once and that alone seems to have a lasting effect. I'll probably come back to it when my motivation wanes again, but there hasn't been a need for that yet. Give it a try. Write the cost benefit analysis to see why it's in your best interest to start today. Write the tech talk table to list your negative thoughts and counter thoughts. It just might be a game changer for you too. Finally, Dr. Burns says to give yourself credit for what you accomplished instead of calling yourself a failure. If you only did 10 minutes one day, that's still way better than nothing. Dr. Burns says when things don't turn out as well as you hoped, don't give up and learn from the experience to move forward. So schedule the day you want to have, do a dopamine detox, change your state through music and motion, and try this feeling good handbook exercise. Good luck. Mm -hmm.